into the ring It's time to rock the night Sergeant Slaughter's here Ready for the fight Million dollar man With his gold and his flair We've been through it all We've gone everywhere Wrestle Rock Okay, the first question is, uh, Mr. Clark, uh, we want to know uh, when you were young, what kind of uh, guy were you at elementary school? <laughs> I was very active in sports. Um, I, I felt like I got along with everyone. I was not, um, I don't know, I, I, didn't, I didn't really get any fights or anything like that. I was, I was a good kid. I, I, you know, I had good parents, good mom and dad, and so, yeah. Um, my dad, um, my dad was a former uh, U.S. Marine, okay. and all my family's military veteran, and I am also. And so I knew better than to screw up. <laughs> and so if my dad just gave me the look, I was like, "Okay, I got it. <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice." <laughs> but uh, yeah, as I go back to the question, as a kid in elementary school, I think I was athletics and uh, yeah, good neighborhood, that kind of thing. That's good. Yeah. Uh, around uh, 1988, uh, you stepped into the ring for the first time um, in a pro wrestling uh, training. Who was behind your training and how many fights uh, you did to become a professional wrestler, my friend? Well, in 1988, 89, that era, I was actually, what I was doing you probably could not do this in, in this current era of college sports and pro wrestling. I was still playing college football. And um, I was green as grass. I had not been trained, but I met a legend by the name of Ox Baker. And Ox Baker introduced me to the business. Uh, he didn't really train me. Basically, I walked into his living room. He's like, oh my God, you look great. Look at you, you're six foot six, you're 300 pounds. You'll be a great pro wrestler. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I'd love to be a pro wrestler, but I'm, I'm not ready. I need to be trained. Uh, either way, I ended up in a couple of wrestling rings and a couple of matches, but again, not really ready to be a pro wrestler until I graduated college and moved to Atlanta a couple of years later and to actually be trained by the assassin Jody Hamilton and Sarge Dwayne Bruce. So those two guys really trained me, if that, that, that story makes sense. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sure. Don't make anything up now, come on. Oh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I got Adam Bob sitting up here in the front row in case you get out of hand. <laughs> well, yeah, see right there. The mini Clark is over there. If the, if the eyes start turning red, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the, the early 90s, uh, you joined the old era of WCW. Yeah. Uh, at, as the Night Stalker, how did you get recruited by uh, WCW? Uh, that, again, that situation was what I, a little bit what I was referring to earlier. I was still in college at the time, and Ox Baker, um, he, he knew some people in WCW, and I, it got me on a couple of matches, but again, I wasn't ready for it. It's one of those things, I always tell myself that I look back at that time and I go, wow, I, you know, I, I got a shot, but I took a couple steps and fell on my face. But that actually taught me that, hey man, you really need to get trained. And after that, I was I moved to Atlanta permanently to be trained. And from there, I would go on to work independence all around that area, uh, New Orleans, all of the Southeast, and finally getting a break with Jim Cornette and Smoky Mountain Wrestling. So that would really be my first real break. And I, I owe that break to Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff who, oh, wow. who uh, Paul put in a good word to Jim Cornette about me because I'd worked Paul with some independents around the Southeast and, and, and uh, Paul felt strongly enough to put his name on the line and say, hey, you need to bring this guy in. So, me. And I was blessed to uh, get that opportunity and work with Jim Cornette. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. So you wrestled against uh, the late uh, CDUD, Sid Vicious, of course, in WCW and the Pro Wrestling Observer Flag U your match as the worst match of the year. After this seat back, 
how can you pick up yourself up and have a successful career like uh, you've had? Um, that was just, actually, I, that was a good thing because I knew it was a bad match. And uh, that goes back to me not being ready. That's why I told myself as soon as, because I was still in college playing college football when that happened. And I said, okay, as soon as I graduate, I packed up everything I owned in, in a U-Haul, drove to Atlanta and made the commitment to go to be trained by Jody and Sarge and learn how to wrestle, learn how to work. So yeah, that's how that whole thing went about. But yeah, working with Sid, uh, yeah, man, bad match, match of the, terrible match of the year. Uh, agreed, fully deserved. But that sort of put a chip on my shoulder to say, you know, I, I am gonna make these people realize I can do this. I knew I was a good enough af athlete. I was a former military police, combat trained soldier. I was a college football player. I was a powerlifting champion. And I knew that I could make it in pro wrestling. I just needed to be trained because the, the determination part was there. Yeah, it was exactly. just a matter of like, okay. And, and that, honestly, that, that bad match of the year kind of thing, it, I, I'll be truthful, it, it pissed me off. But it was deserved. I should have had the worst. But it, it, if it makes sense, what I'm saying, to put a chip on my shoulder and say, okay, now it's time to get to work. And so that's how that happened. Thank yeah. you so much. Sure. Earlier, uh, you were talking about uh, the late uh, Brian Adams. Yep. My question is a little bit personal, but uh, did you consider that guy as a brother? Yes, yes. Yeah, we were that close. We were, uh, I love being with him, and he obviously liked being with me, and uh, we traveled together everywhere. We flew, our flights were together, our hotels were together. Uh, we were usually a room or two apart, down the hallway maybe. Breakfast, lunch, dinner together, weight room, working out, whatever, whatever city we're flying into, hit the gym, find a tanning bed, work out. <laughs> it's just a grind. But, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, yeah, you definitely always have my back. And, and the same. Hey, after your uh, different path with Paulo and with Oman, who do you think was the better suit to, uh, to adapt to your character, to your gimmick? Of the two, which was, was yeah. better? Yeah. Well, I would say Harvey just for the fact that it was more serious. Polo's was yeah. a little bit more, did I ask your question, Mike? Yeah, and he's smarter than John. Well, so. yeah, yeah, he was definitely smaller, but I, I think it was just a matter of his, some of his mannerisms outside. You know, managers can do a lot of crazy stuff outside that either can add to or take away from the character in the ring. So I think the seriousness of Harvey versus the non-seriousness of Polo yeah, that would be all right. Yeah, all right, all right. Mr. Clark, uh, are you still disappointed of your match at WrestleMania 10 against Earthquake in Madison Square Garden? I wouldn't say disappointed. We could have definitely had a longer match. The match was actually it's too short. Uh, yeah, it was too short. Uh, but prior to that, you know, we, we do do European tours prior to going into WrestleMania. That's the way they used to get guys ready for the WrestleMania match. And I had worked I had worked Earthquake for like 10 nights in a row and we have a 15 minute match. Uh, and so and so we were ready to have a long match and, and, and have it a really good match because I was doing all the flying around because he was like six, eight, probably, I want to say 400 pounds, something. Anyways, a huge, huge guy. 464. 464? 464. Okay, I'll take your word for it. It was a small guy Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, to answer the question, yeah, we could have had a much better match, but it was a timing thing, they cut it short. Either way, the payoff was still the same, whether it was one minute or 15, that's the truth. The, the, the paycheck was still the same. Yeah, I would have liked for it to have been a longer <laughs> match. I really would have, because we worked. I worked hard to have a good match with him, and just to show that, hey, two big monsters can have a good match. So yeah, it, it would have been nice to have it longer. <laughs> awesome. Uh, during our shows, you did more than uh, 10 casket matches uh, with uh, The Undertaker. What is your opinion about uh, the Phenom? Yeah, I mean, he's had a phenomenal career, had a phenomenal career, and yeah, man, we had, I don't, I didn't even know it was 10, I didn't know how many, I, it seemed like it was more than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, that was no fun being inside of a casket, but you know, hey, it's part of the job, right? But yeah, I, re I remember being put into the casket on some of those shows, and then like, you know, uh, it wasn't like I just put in the casket, oh, the match is over. You gotta be put in the casket, you got to get the lid closed on you, 
and then you've got to be pushed back all the way down, the way down the ramp and into the back, and then you can get out of the casket. So it's like, what the hell? It's like, you know, well, at least I know what it's like now. You know, I, you know, <laughs> when that time comes, I got an idea. You know, but yeah, um, interesting to say the least as far as uh, it, it being being a victim of the dead man and going into the casket. Yeah. At Bash at the Beach 2000. Do you have any comments about uh, Russo organ controversy during that pay per view? Is that the pay per view where Chronic won the World Tag Team titles? <laughs> so, why the hell are you asking me about somebody else when you should be talking to me? <laughs> hey, 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 who the hell cares about the rest of the card? Chronic, three time World Tag Team champions, all the Hell things. yeah! Come on, man. Please. I'm really new <laughs> And uh, as usual, uh, with our guests, of course, uh, my partner Benoit will try to predict the future of our guests. Uh, his nickname is uh, Nostradamus. It's all about the French prophet, of course, and he will try to predict the future. So go ahead, my friend. <laughs> Says you're buying dinner. I was just, hey, I was just helping out, man. I was like, oh, it's all right. First, seriously, what what happened to your tattoo on your left shoulder? Laser it right off. Okay, because you can't, you can't even see it. It just, it was a process, but yeah, I had to laser it off. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's pretty easy, huh? Because my prediction is uh, you're gonna have another one on the same shoulder. Nope. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. oh, okay. It's all right. All right. Swing and a miss. Come on, you got something better than that. <laughs> Besides buying dinner, you've got something better. Come on. I predict you, uh, you will be. Why not induction uh, will be inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame in a few weeks. You deserve it! You deserve it! You deserve it! You deserve it! You deserve it. Where, where's my camera when I hear this? <laughs> <laughs> wow, hey, I, you know, I, that, uh, very humbling, honestly. I, I, I don't think it would ever happen, but very kind of you to say that or even even chant that was very cool i uh i would honestly i would rather see uh, i would like to see brian adams crush inducted i would love to see that whether i anything ever happens with me or not i could care less yeah i truthfully i would love to see brian adams.